all have an eye crochet cute things please don't skip this part of the video because i'm going to go over some important things that you need to know before following the tutorial as well as the yarns and materials you will need i want to start by saying that this tutorial is beginner friendly but not absolute beginner friendly since i'm going to be working with fluffy channel yarn it might be harder for you to see the stitches but all the techniques that i'll use are very repetitive and they're super beginner friendly because i'm mostly going to be using a single crochet if you're here just to crochet a cute little sweater for your stuffed animal, please note that there is no specific measurement. There is no specific stitch count or specific number of rows, and you can adjust the pattern to the size of your stuffed animal. I think that's very important to know because I'm not going to be giving you a super specific pattern to follow. You basically have to customize it to the size and proportions of your stuffed animal. So don't overthink it. Just do as many stitches and rows as you need to, and I promise it's going to turn out really cute. Before you even start crocheting the teddy bear, I want you to go to the description of this video and open up the written pattern for reference. It's very important to have something to refer to when you're working with a Meek Rumi project. <laughs> the steps are very repetitive and you can choose to start all of the pieces with either a real magic ring or if that's harder for you then you can do the fake magic ring technique which I'm going to show you. So even if you're a beginner and you haven't gotten a hang of the real magic ring yet, don't worry you can make this very easily with my fake magic ring technique. This is like my third plushie video in a row and it's getting very repetitive. One of my goals this year was to diversify my content and be more intentional with my creativity. I've put out a bunch of new videos that I'm not completely satisfied with, but don't worry, I see your request and I'm working hard to put more creative projects out there. It's just a bit hard for one little brain to keep generating new ideas every week. So please bear with me as I try to find my feet on this fast moving bus that has no seats or stops. It's been incredibly stressful balancing my life at university with my content on YouTube, but what's really been helping me manage my stress is therapy, which I've started online. Therapy has been incredibly helpful in helping me create smart, specific, measurable, attainable, and time-bound goals to help me balance my life. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, which is BetterHelp. BetterHelp makes starting therapy easier and much less intimidating for a lot of people since you can have therapy sessions as a phone call, video chat, or even messaging, whatever is the most comfortable version of therapy for you. You can join over 4 million people who've used BetterHelp to start living a healthier, happier life by clicking the link in the description or visiting betterhelp.com maha. To get started, you fill out a questionnaire that will ask you questions about what challenges you're going through and what kind of therapist you'd like, and then BetterHelp can match you with a therapist to help you. You'll get matched with a therapist in most cases within 48 hours. You can schedule therapy sessions at a time that's convenient for you, and if you feel like your therapist isn't a great fit, you can switch therapists with a click of a button in your settings at no additional cost. If you think you might benefit from therapy, I highly recommend considering online therapy with BetterHelp. You can click the link in the description or visit betterhelp.com maham to start. Clicking that link helps support this channel and it also gets you 10% off your first month of therapy with BetterHelp so you can connect with a therapist and see if it helps you. When it comes to yarn and hook size, I've used a bunch of different things. For the teddy bear, I use fluffy channel yarn with a 4.5mm hook. And the black and the white and the pink is cotton acrylic yarn with a 4mm hook. This one's a little bit different. This is fine weight yarn with a 3.5 millimeter hook. And all of these yarns are available on my Amazon storefront. So you can purchase them from there and find the exact yarn and shade and brand. If you use a larger hook size with a thicker yarn, you'll have a much bigger teddy bear. But since the pattern for the sweater is completely customizable, you can use any yarn and hook size for that because you can always make the sweater bigger or smaller depending on what you need. You'll also need some additional materials like safety eyes. You'll need a sewing needle because there is a little bit of sewing. This can be plastic or metal. And you'll also need some stitch markers to keep track of your rounds if you're doing the teddy bear and to keep track of your increases for the shoulders of the sweater. You'll need four stitch markers for the sweater and just one when you're making the teddy bear. You can also go ahead and use a bobby pin if you don't have stitch markers, but I've put a bunch of them on my Amazon storefront as well. And then of course you're gonna need some stuffing to fill your teddy bear. Happy crafting everyone and let me know what color teddy bear or sweater you're making in the comments. I'm going to be using a fake magic ring because when I use a real magic ring with this kind of yarn, the yarn sometimes sheds like that. If this is happening to you, then I recommend a fake magic ring. You're gonna start off by making a regular slip knot. And then you're going to chain three. One, two, and three. Now we're going to insert our hook into the very first chain that we did and slip stitch. Insert your hook into that first chain, pull the loop through making a slip stitch. Now the circle that's formed in between your chains, do you see my nail poking out over there? That white thing? That is our fake magic circle. So when you're inserting your stitches, you have to insert your stitches in between the chains. So in between that circle that's formed between the chains. We're going to chain one to start the round. 
just like how a real magic ring has a chain one. Now we're going to insert our hook into that circle that I showed you, and we're going to do our first single crochet. So pull up a loop through the circle. You're gonna have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops. That's your first single crochet of round one. So get your marker and place it through the stitch at the top. Now we have to do a total of six single crochets in this round. So you did your first single crochet, let's do our second. Insert your hook back through that circle, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Go ahead and do four more to make a total of six single crochets inside your fake magic ring or your real magic ring. For round two, we have to do two single crochets in every stitch. That means that in every stitch that you see here, you're going to do two single crochets and in total, you're going to have 12 single crochets in round two. So start by inserting your hook into that stitch that you marked. Do a single crochet. And because that's your first single crochet of round two, you have to place your marker back through it. Now insert your hook back through that same stitch and do another single crochet because we have to do two single crochets in every stitch. Insert your hook into the next stitch and do two single crochets in that stitch as well. And do this all the way around until you reach your marker. Now we're going to start round three. Insert your hook into the marked stitch and do your first single crochet of round three. Place your marker through that stitch. We always mark the first single crochet of every round so we can track where our round starts from and where it ends. For round three, we're doing one single crochet and then an increase. An increase is basically when you do two single crochets in the same stitch. So you did one single crochet. Now in the next stitch, you have to do an increase. Insert your hook into the next stitch and do two single crochets in that same stitch. And repeat this all the way around until you come back to the stitch before your marker. So in the next stitch, you're gonna do one single crochet. In the next stitch, you're gonna do an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. Repeat this all the way around, one single crochet, and then an increase. For round four, we're going to do two single crochets and then an increase. So we're gonna start your round just like we always do. You're gonna insert your hook into the marked stitch and do your first single crochet of round four and then place your marker back through that stitch. So that's your first single crochet. In the second stitch, you're gonna do your second single crochet. And then in the next stitch, you're gonna do an increase. So you're going to insert two single crochets in the same stitch. And now you're gonna repeat this all the way around. So you're gonna do one single crochet and then another single crochet in the next stitch and then an increase in the next stitch. One, two, and then an increase. For the next round, we're gonna do three single crochets and then an increase. So insert your hook into the marked stitch. That's your first single crochet, place your marker back through. So you did one, and in the next stitch, you're gonna do two. In the next stitch, you're gonna do three. And in the next stitch, you're gonna do an increase, which is two single crochets in the same stitch. And repeat this all the way around. So one, two, three. Those three are one in each stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're gonna do an increase, which is two in the same stitch. Repeat all the way around until you reach your marker. Also, I want to stop here and show you guys that it's completely normal for this piece to not be completely flat. It is going to be a little bit round, so that's completely normal. We're going to do four single crochets and then an increase. So start your round like we always do. Don't forget to mark the first stitch of round six. So you did one, in the next stitch two, in the next stitch three, in the next stitch four. So that's four single crochets, one in each stitch. And then in the next stitch, you're gonna do an increase, which is two in the same stitch. Now go ahead and repeat this all the way around. So for round seven, eight, nine, 10, and 11, you're only gonna do one single crochet in every stitch. So repeat these steps. Insert your hook into the marked stitch. Do your first single crochet, and don't forget to place your marker so that you know where your round starts and ends. 
Now just go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch. Insert your hook, one single crochet, go into the next stitch, one single crochet, and do this all the way around to complete round seven. Done with round seven, and now I'm going to start round eight the same way. Insert your hook into the marked stitch. That's your first single crochet, and place your marker. One single crochet in every stitch all the way around. Once you're done with round eight, do the same steps for round nine, 10, and 11. Once you're done with round 11, this is what you should have. For round 12, the pattern is going to be four single crochets and then a decrease. So instead of doing an increase, we're gonna be doing a decrease and I'll show you how to do that. So go ahead and start your next round like we always do. Make your first single crochet of round 12 and place your marker. So remember, we have to do four single crochets. That's one, two, three, four. That's four single crochets, one in each stitch. Now we're going to do a decrease. To make an invisible decrease, you're not going to insert your hook completely through the stitch like that. Instead, you're only gonna grab the front loop. So you're gonna split the stitch and only grab the front loop Push your hook down and grab the front loop of the other stitch as well. You can use your finger to help you. Then you should have three loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over and pull through two loops, then yarn over and pull through the other two loops, and that is a decrease. Now you're gonna repeat this pattern all the way around. So you're gonna do four single crochets. One, two, three, four. Now we're going to do a decrease. So you're going to grab onto the front loop and the front loop of the other stitch. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat this all the way around. For the next round, we're going to follow very similar steps. This time you're going to do three single crochets and then a decrease. Start your round like we always do. That's your first single crochet. So that's one, two, three. That's three single crochets, one in each stitch. Now we're going to do a decrease. So you're going to grab onto the front loop and the front loop of the other stitch. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two, and repeat this all the way around. One, two, three, and then a decrease. For the next round, we're going to do two single crochets and then a decrease, so the pattern is very repetitive. That's your first single crochet, and then your second. Now you're going to do a decrease, and then repeat this all the way around. As you do these rounds, you're going to notice that your circle is getting smaller. So go ahead and do two single crochets and then a decrease all the way around. Next, we're going to do one single crochet and then a decrease. So you're going to start off with your first single crochet, mark it, and then directly after you're going to do a decrease. So once again, same steps, the pattern just decreases by one number. So that's your decrease. Now repeat this all the way around, one single crochet, and then a decrease. You can use your fingers to help you and make sure that you're only going through the front loops. Now we're ready to end our work. So what I like to do is just slip stitch into the marked stitch. Now you don't need your marker anymore. So yarn over, pull through, and then pull that loop through the other one. You can also chain one to make it extra secure. Now you have to leave sort of like a long tail for sewing later. Bite your yarn, pull, and tighten. And you're done with the head. To make the body, you're going to repeat the same steps that you did for the head. So from round one to round nine, you're going to do the same steps that you did to make the head. After you're done with round nine, the next few rounds are going to be different from the head so that we can make the body. So for round 10, you're going to do four single crochets and then a decrease. So you're going to go ahead and insert your hook into the first stitch and start your round like we always do. It's one. Then in the next stitch, we're gonna do two. In the next stitch, we're gonna do three. In the next stitch, we're gonna do four. So that's four single crochets, one in each stitch. And now we're gonna do a decrease. So you're gonna grab onto only the front loop of the next stitch and the front loop of the next stitch as well. 
Then you're gonna have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, then yarn over and pull through the other two loops, and repeat this pattern all the way around. So you're going to do four single crochets, one, two, three, and four. Then you're going to do a decrease. Once you're done, you're going to notice that your body is starting to get smaller. Since we're going to be adding a sweater, I wanted to make the body a little bit smaller than the head and a little bit longer as well. So for round 11 and 12, you're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch. Make sure that your stitch count remains the same for round 11 and 12. Start the round like we always do, and then just do one single crochet in every stitch for both those rounds. After you're done with round 12, round 13 is going to be three single crochets and then a decrease. So you're going to have one, two, three, now let's do a decrease and repeat this all the way around. One, two, three, and decrease. For the next round, we're going to do only one single crochet in every stitch. So go all the way around, no decreases or increases, just one single crochet in every stitch. Next, we're going to do two single crochets and then a decrease. And then in the next stitch, you're going to do your second. So that's two single crochets, one in each stitch, and then you're going to do a decrease. And now you're going to repeat this all the way around. One, two, and decrease. We're almost done. For the next round, we have to do one single crochet in every stitch. Make sure that your stitch count remains the same and start your round like you always do. You're just doing one single crochet in every stitch. No increases and no decreases. All right, everyone, we've reached our last round. And for this round, you're just going to start off by doing one single crochet and mark it. The pattern is going to be one single crochet and then an increase. So that's our first single crochet. Then we're gonna do a decrease and you're gonna repeat this all the way around. So you're going to do one single crochet and then a decrease. And then you're going to notice that your hole is going to get smaller. And now we're ready to end our work. So you're going to end it the same way that we did for the head. And this is how you're gonna end all of your pieces. You're going to insert your hook into the marked stitch and slip stitch by sliding the loop through. So you don't need to leave one for the body. But for the other pieces, like the legs, the arms, the nose, the ears, make sure to leave a longer tail so that you can use that same tail for sewing. For the legs, you can choose to make it all with the fluffy yarn or you can add this base in the middle with a different color. Now you can make this base with a cotton or acrylic yarn or you can do it with a fluffy yarn as well. Go ahead and make a fake magic ring or a real magic ring. For cotton and acrylic yarns, I like making a regular magic ring. So all I do is hold my yarn like this with the end facing me and then wrap the yarn around my fingers making sort of like an X shape. Then I use my ring finger to hold it in place. I insert my hook under, grab onto this end, pull it up and twist. Now I'm going to chain one to make the magic ring. So using my ring finger to hold onto this yarn, I'm going to insert my hook under and slide it through making a chain one. Now you've got your magic ring. For round one, we're going to be inserting eight single crochets into the magic ring. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Since that is your first single crochet, don't forget to mark it with your stitch marker. Go ahead and do seven more single crochets so that you have a total of eight single crochets in round one. Then you can pull your magic ring in tighter and we're going to start round two. For round two, you're going to be doing two single crochets in every stitch, starting from the first one. Insert your hook into the marked stitch, do your first single crochet of round two and place your marker into that stitch. Insert your hook back into that same stitch and do another single crochet because the pattern is two single crochets in every stitch. Go ahead and do two single crochets in every stitch all the way around. Make sure that you insert your hook into the same stitch. Once I'm almost done with the second round, that's when I like to pull the magic ring super tight just to close up the circle in the middle. 
Now, before I do my last single crochet of round two, so that's my last stitch before the marker, I did one single crochet, and now I have to do another single crochet in the same stitch. I'm gonna insert my hook, pull up a loop, but I'm not gonna complete that single crochet. Instead, we're going to switch colors. So get the yarn that you want to switch to, make a little loop with it like this, and slide that yarn through the two loops on your hook like that, and then just pull this to tighten it. Now we've attached the next color that we're going to work with. Remove your marker. For round three, we're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch with our new color. Pay attention to how I'm going to hold the yarn so that we can work over the end. First, pull this a little bit tighter. Insert your hook into that marked stitch and work over these ends. So make sure that you're holding on to them. Pull up a loop. And then single crochet like normal. Make sure that you're holding on to these. And that's your first single crochet of round three. Now just go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch. For the first few stitches, make sure that you're working over these two ends just so that they don't unravel later on. I'm just holding on to them and doing one single crochet in every stitch until I reach the marker. And then once you worked over a little bit of it, you can get your scissor and you can just cut the extra. And then continue working like normal with one single crochet in every stitch. When you come back over here, you're going to single crochet into that last stitch that you did with that previous color. And now we're going to start round four. Round four is the same thing. You're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch. So insert your hook into the marked stitch. Do your first single crochet of round four. And then place your marker in that stitch. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. For round five and six, we're going to give the legs a little bit more shape. So you're going to go ahead and from the marked stitch, you're going to do seven single crochets, one in each stitch. Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Then we're going to do two decreases. So that means you're going to do an invisible decrease two times. Insert your hook and do an invisible decrease. That's our first decrease. We're going to do this one more time in the next two stitches. That's your second decrease. Now you're just going to do five single crochets, one in each stitch. One, two, five. Now you should have reached your marker. Now we're going to do the next round and we're going to have a few decreases in this as well. We're going to do five single crochets. So that's your first single crochet of the next round. So don't forget to mark it. That's one two, five. Now we're going to do two decreases. That's one decrease. Now we're going to do another. That's our second decrease. Now we're going to do five more single crochets, one in each stitch. One, two, four, five. Now we've reached our marker and we're going to end the legs. So insert your hook into the marked stitch, remove your marker, slip stitch, and then cut the yarn, pull, tighten, and you've got cute little legs that you can fill with stuffing. All right, sorry everyone, my table is such a mess, but I wanted to show you all the little bits and pieces you're going to be making now. So you're going to make two identical pieces for the ears. Now, they won't look like ears, but when we sew them on, we're going to fold them in a way that they start looking like ears. Then you're also going to follow the written pattern to make your arms. So this is what the finished arms will look like. After you follow the pattern and you're done with your last round, here's an additional step that you need to do. You're going to insert your hook through both of these pieces like that and then you're going to single crochet then you're going to insert your hook through both of these pieces again so just poke your hook through and single crochet again then you're going to chain one to end your work make sure you leave a long tail for sewing and tighten now there's one more thing that you can do however this is optional you don't have to you can make a small little inner ear just to decorate the ears a little bit and this is really simple i'm using a regular cotton acrylic yarn for this to make a real magic ring you hold onto it like this wrap it around your fingers making sort of like an x shape insert your hook under grab onto this end and twist then you're going to chain one use your finger to help you 
and slide it through. You're going to insert six single crochets into this ring. Insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through two. You don't have to mark the stitch or anything. You just have to do a total of six single crochets. Once you're done, you're just going to chain one. And before you fasten off your work, pull your magic ring in super tight and you're gonna get this sort of like shape. Then you can just cut your yarn. Pull and tighten. Make sure you do leave a bit for sewing. And that is the inner part of the ear. Once you're done with these pieces, go ahead and sew the legs onto the body, fill it with stuffing, fill your head with stuffing as well after you've added your safety eyes and embroidered the nose and a little happy face. To make this, all you have to do is get your plastic needle and black yarn, go up and down, up and down many times until the yarn kind of bunches up into this oval shape. Then you're going to come out from the middle with your needle, go back to the other side. So it's just basic sewing and embroidery, nothing special. Now I'm going to show you how to attach the head onto the body. And if you've never done sewing before, then this demonstration is really going to help you. And after watching this part, you'll be able to join the legs onto the body as well, because it's really simple. Attach your yarn to your needle with a double knot. Don't just do one knot, do two to make it extra secure and to make sure that this doesn't come off as you're sewing. To position the head in a place where you think that it'll look good. So you have to make sure that the face is facing forward and you're going to insert it through the stitch and the next stitch on the other side like that so we're going to be working through both pieces and then you're just going to pull and you're going to repeat this all the way around so you're going to insert your needle through the body and then through the stitch in the head pull and you're sewing so body head make sure that you grab both parts of the stitches pull and that's how you're going to be joining the head onto the body. So you're going to repeat this all the way around. The stitches will just line themselves up. I also want to remind you guys that the amount of stuffing you add can really change the shape of the head and the body. So I added a lot of stuffing at the bottom, but not too much at the top. Then I added a lot of stuffing in the center of the bear, but not too much at the top. That's why my top is flatter. You can start attaching them from the sixth row. So that's row one, and this is row six. So you can start attaching them from the sixth row all the way up to the ninth row. For the arms, I sewed them right after the last row. So that's the row that's connecting your head and your body, and the arms start from right over there. To make the ears, you're first going to sew the pink part into the center of your piece. Use your needle, go up and down, up and down, attaching the pink piece to the brown piece. Once that's done, find the place where you want your ears to start. So take your piece, place it where you want, and then sew all the way around. That's gonna look fine too, but if you wanna take it an extra step further, you can pinch the ear like this, fold it a little bit, and then sew it on. So I'm gonna place it starting from the second row and the other one's going to start from the second row as well. I'm going to place them like that and I'm just going to sew around them. And there you go. That's what your bear will look like once you're done sewing it together. We're going to start by making the neckline. So the sweater will start from the top, which is the neckline, and then we're going to continue onwards. You have to make a piece that is long enough to wrap around your stuffed animal's neck or below the head. Then we're going to join it to make this circular shape. And then we're going to add a fake ribbing effect to make it like a cuff at the top. Start by making a slip knot. And now we're going to make foundation single crochets. A foundation single crochet is basically a single crochet stitch that starts without the chain. If this is too hard for you, then you can just chain the length that can wrap around your stuffed animal's neck or below their head and then single crochet in every stitch. However, I think that making foundation single crochets is much faster, so I would recommend that you try this out. So you're going to chain two, and then you're going to insert your hook into that very first chain that you did. But you have to make sure to grab onto this loop over here and the one at the back. So you have to insert your hook and go through these two loops. So I went through one of the loops, and now I'm going to go through the other one as well. This is what you should have on your hook. 
Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. And then you're going to lift your hook a little bit, yarn over and pull through one of the loops, then yarn over and pull through the other two loops. And that is your first single crochet without even making a chain. And this is what you're gonna do. This is the top of your work, this is the bottom. So when you turn your work to the bottom, you're gonna notice this V stitch over here. So to make the next single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into this V stitch at the bottom. And then you'll know that you inserted it in the right place if you've got two loops on your hook, just like how we insert our hook into a regular stitch. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through the bottom stitch or those two loops. Lift your hook up, making this part a little bit looser. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over and pull through two. That's your second single crochet. Let's do this again. So insert your hook at the bottom. And when you do this, you should have grabbed onto two loops, which is the stitch at the bottom. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops. Yarn over, pull through one. Lift your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do it one more time. Insert your hook at the bottom. So you go through the stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat. Now go ahead and keep doing foundation single crochets until the piece is long enough to make the neckline of your sweater. This is my piece, and I can wrap it around my bear's neck like that. So once you can do that with a little bit of breathing room so you can get it on and off, you're done with the first step. So for reference, this is 35 foundation single crochets, but with the thinner yarn, I made 39 foundation single crochets. Now here's where it's going to get a little bit tricky. So this is the back of your work. This is the side that you're working with. Now if you turn it to the other side, you're going to have these stitches and in the middle of these stitches, that's a post. So do you see this little circle part? This is a post. Now we're going to be working into those to make the ribbing. So this is how you're working. You're going to fold it so that the other side is facing you. And then you're going to insert your hook into the bottom stitch and slip stitch to join. Now we've joined the two pieces together. Now we're going to start the ribbing. So to start this, you're going to chain chain three. Now you're going to yarn over and we're going to double crochet into these posts. So instead of inserting your hook into the stitches at the top, you're going to insert your hook into your work like this and bring it up on the other side. So you're grabbing onto this post over here or the middle of your stitch. And then you're going to yarn over and pull it up. Then you're going to have three loops on your hook yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the other two. And this is going to make your stitch pop up, giving it like that ribbing effect. So this was a front post double crochet. Now we're gonna do a back post double crochet. So instead of inserting your hook from the front, you're gonna go to the back and insert your hook from the back. And then look, that's your post. You're gonna go back through it like that. Then yarn over and pull through. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Don't worry, I'm going to show you a few more times. If you haven't gotten the hang of it yet, don't worry about it. These are your posts. And do you see the holes? That's where you come up and go down from. Let's do a front post now. So yarn over, insert your hook from the front. Come out from the other side of the post. Yarn over and pull up a loop. Then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do a back post now. So you're gonna insert your hook from the back. Put it in. Then you're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. You're gonna have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do a front post, insert your hook from the front. double crochet and then you're going to repeat this all the way around and this is what's going to give you the ribbing effect so this is what the texture will look like it's kind of like ribbing because it goes up and down up and down as a note this is what it's going to look like with thinner yarn 
So the ribbing is going to be a little bit more delicate if you use thinner yarn. But with thicker yarn, you're going to have like a chunky sweater. And with thinner yarn, you'll have a more like a neater sweater. So it's completely up to you. This is what you should have when you come all the way around. So I worked into this last stitch over here. And now we're going to end this round. You're going to insert your hook into that chain three that you did at the beginning right over there. That's your chain three. Insert your hook into it and slip stitch like that. Now you've done the neckline, the cuff, the ribbing, whatever you want to call it. And now we're going to start our next round. So you're going to chain two. And before we start the next round, I want you to mark the part of the shoulders for your sweater. So to do this, you're just going to fold your work in half and then place a stitch marker on the stitches at the corner. So you can either just fold it and mark the stitch that's at the corner, or you can count the stitches and make them equal on both sides. It's really up to you. And there you go. So this is going to be where the shoulders of your sweater will start from. It's important to mark that area because this part will get wider. So we need to know where to start that from. So my stitch marker is nine stitches from here and then another nine stitches from there. After chaining two, you're going to turn your work this way. So you were working in a round, but now you're going to change the direction of the round. So every time you start a new round, you have to turn your work and change the direction just so that we're not working in continuous rounds and it's a little bit easier to keep track of the rounds that you're doing. Go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch. So your stitch is this V part at the top just do one single crochet in each of them. So to make a regular single crochet, you insert your hook into the stitch, pull up a loop, then yarn over, pull through two. Do this until you reach your first stitch marker. Now in the stitch where your marker was, you're going to insert three single crochets in the same stitch. So that's one, insert your hook back into that stitch, two, back into that stitch again, and three. So that's three single crochets. And go ahead and place your stitch marker into your second single crochet. So remember we did one, two, three. Place your marker into that second single crochet. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch again until you reach your next stitch marker. When you reach your next stitch marker, you're going to insert three single crochets in the same stitch again. So one, two, and three in the same stitch. Then you're going to place your marker into the second single crochet that you did. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch until you come back where we started, so where your chain two is. Now we've reached the end of this round, so remember you had your chain two at the beginning, you're just going to insert your hook into that chain two and slip stitch. And now we're going to start the next round, so you're going to chain two again. Don't forget to turn your work to the other side. And now we're going to single crochet in every stitch until we reach the stitch right before the marker. So do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the marker. Go ahead and get two more markers. Now I've got two stitches left before the stitch that has the marker. I'm just going to do one single crochet. Now we're going to do three single crochets into the stitch that is before your marker. So remove your marker. And in this one, right before it, you're going to do three single crochets in the same stitch. So one, two, and three. Then you're going to take your marker and you're going to place it into that first single crochet that you did. So you did three, two, one. So you're going to place it into that first one. Now in the next stitch, you're going to do one single crochet. And in the next stitch, you're going to do three single crochets again. So one, two in the same stitch and three in the same stitch. Now you're going to take your marker and you're going to place it into this very last stitch that you made. And this is what you should have now. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch. Do one single crochet in every stitch until you come back over here. Now I have one stitch left before my marker. So in this stitch, we're going to insert three single crochets and remove this. That's my first single crochet, so I'm going to place my marker into the first single crochet, just so I don't have to later. Now I'm going to do two more single crochets in that same stitch, so two and three. In the next stitch, we're going to do one single crochet, and then in the next stitch, we're going to do three more single crochets in the same stitch. One, two, and three. Now place your stitch marker into the last stitch. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the end of the round. 
Now I've reached the end of my round. Now you're going to repeat the same steps for the next few rounds. So please pay attention so that you can understand how this is going to work. To end your round, you're going to repeat these steps. You're going to insert your hook into the first stitch or the chain two. Then you're going to slip stitch. So every time you want to end a round, that's how you're going to do it. Now here's how to start a new round. You're going to chain two. And then you're going to turn your work so that you're working in the opposite direction. That's what you're going to do every time you want to start a new round. And then you're going to insert one single crochet into every stitch until you reach your stitch marker. Whenever you reach your marker, in the stitch where the marker is, you're going to insert three single crochets. So do your first single crochet and then place the marker back into that first single crochet. Then do two more single crochets into that same stitch. So two and three. Now you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the next stitch marker. And then once you reach the stitch with the marker, so this one over here, you're going to remove your marker and do three single crochets into that stitch. So one, two, and three. Then you're going to place your marker into this last stitch over here. Now you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the stitch marker on the other side. And then we're going to repeat the same steps that we did on this side. So I'm just going to show you really quickly what we're doing. So when we do three single crochets in every stitch, what it does is that it makes this part bigger. So you're going to keep repeating these steps until this part can go under your arm or until the arms can fit inside. I'm going to show you once again later, but I just wanted to show you what your work should look like so far. Now I've reached the stitch markers on the other side. So in the stitch that had the marker, we're going to do three single crochets. So that's one. Don't forget to mark the first single crochet that you do. Then you're going to do two and three in the same stitch. Then you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the next marker. And now I've reached my next marker, so I'm going to remove the marker. And in the place where the marker was, we're going to do three single crochets. One, two, three. So that's three single crochets in the same stitch. And then you're going to take your marker and you're going to place it into the third stitch. And there you go. So now this part's going to get wider. So you always have to place your marker into the first single crochet that you do and the last single crochet that you do. Now you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the end of the round. I've reached the end of my round, so I'm going to slip stitch into the first stitch or the chain two. Then we're going to chain two again, turn our work to start the next round, and you're going to repeat the same steps that I showed you until the sweater can fit the shoulders of your stuffed animal. I'm going to do a few more rounds of this, and then I'm going to show you what it should look like when the fit is right. So keep going until you get that comfortable fit for your stuffed animal. So start by doing one single crochet in every stitch until you reach your stitch marker. When you reach your stitch marker, do three single crochets. But before you do the other two, don't forget to mark the first one. Then do two and three in the same stitch. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the next stitch marker. When you reach your next stitch marker, you're going to remove it and then do three single crochets into that stitch. One, two, and three. And then you're going to place your stitch marker into the last stitch that you did, just so you can keep track of where to do the next three single crochets when you do your other round. Now go ahead and do one single crochet in every stitch until you reach the stitch markers on the other side, and then repeat the same thing that you did on this side on the other side. So here's when you should stop doing these rounds. When you feel like you can join these two together under the arm, that means that the top of your sweater is big enough. So right over here, if you feel like you can join them comfortably over here, then you're ready to start the next step. But if it's still small, then you have to keep doing the rounds that I showed you and it's going to get bigger by itself. So make sure that you can do this on the other side as well. I like putting it on my stuffed animal while working just so that I can see the fit. When you're ready to start the next step, just go ahead and start your row like normal and then single crochet until you reach the first stitch marker. So one single crochet in every stitch. And then when you reach your stitch with the stitch marker, you're going to join it under the arms to the other stitch over there. So here's what you're going to do. Remove your stitch marker, insert your hook through it, and then insert your hook through the stitch with the other stitch marker on the other side. 
and now you're going to single crochet these together. So yarn over and go through both of these stitches. Then you're going to have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through those two loops to make a single crochet. Now you're going to go ahead and single crochet one in each stitch around the body until you reach the other stitch marker. So you're just doing one single crochet in every stitch. Now reach the other side over here and we're going to repeat the same thing. So remove the marker and insert your hook into the stitch that had the marker in it. Now go to the other side and insert your hook into the stitch that has the marker in it. Remove your marker. Now single crochet. So yarn over and pull through both of those stitches. Then yarn over and pull through those two loops. And that's your single crochet and now you're just going to single crochet into every stitch until you reach the end of your round. So one single crochet in every stitch. This is what you should have when you're done with that step. We're going to start the next round and now you don't need any of your stitch markers because you're only going to do one single crochet in every stitch all the way around. You're just going to make the body of the sweater. That means that you're going to do one single crochet in every stitch round and round and round until you have the size that you want. So single crochet all the way around and around. Don't go on the sleeves, just go around the body. When you reach this area over here, you're just going to go into the stitches around the body, but not the ones that are connected to your sleeve. So look, I'm just going around it. One single crochet in every stitch now I've reached the front of my sweater, so we're going to build the length this way. I know I keep repeating the same things over and over again, but it's just because I want to be clear about what steps we're doing right now, especially since there's no specific pattern to follow. You basically just customize it to whatever size you want. So right now, you're just going to do rounds around the body. So around this part of the sweater, don't touch the sleeves. You're just going to do one single crochet in every stitch round and round until your sweater is long enough. These are my completed sleeves with a little bit of ribbing at the bottom. There's a little bit of texture that's similar to the neckline. I'm going to show you how to turn it from this or from a really short sleeve to a longer one. So the steps are the exact same. You're going to find that place where you joined the two sides together and you're going to insert your hook through it like that. And you're going to take your yarn, make a little loop with it like this, and you're going to slide it through. Then you're going to chain one to secure this in place and then pull on this to make it tight. Now take this end and just tuck it inside your sleeve. Insert your hook into the next two stitches. Make sure that you're working through both sides and not just one of the like that. So insert your hook through both the stitches and then you're going to slip stitch. Let's do it in the next two stitches. So what we're doing is we're joining the bottom of the sleeves together. So right over here, I have a little bit of a gap. If I start doing my rounds from here, then my sleeves will be very wide. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna join it until I reach this part over here so that my sleeves are a little bit more rectangular. This is not necessary if you feel like you don't have that much of a gap to do this step. Then you can just attach your yarn and then do rounds to make the sleeve longer. I'm going to do one more slip stitch. And now I'm going to start my round. So I'm going to go ahead and chain two. Then I'm going to single crochet into every stitch all the way around. Just like what we were doing for the body, you're going to keep doing rounds until your sleeve is as long as you want. Once you reach the other side and you're done with the round, if you want your sleeve to be longer, then all you're going to do is start another round. So insert your hook into that chain two that we did and slip stitch to end this round, then chain two again, and then you're ready to start your next round. So turn your work and then one single crochet into every stitch to make your sleeves longer. And then you keep doing rounds until your sleeve is as long as you want it to be. When you're done with the length of your sleeve, I'm going to show you how to make the ribbing again. So this time you're going to chain three, one, two, three. So not two, you're going to chain three for the ribbing. And now you're just going to do front post and back post double crochets, just like what we did before. 
So find your post. It's going to be a bit hard to see. Yarn over, insert your hook into the post. So remember, we're not working into the stitch. We're going into the post and coming back up like that. And then you're just going to double crochet like what we did for the neckline and repeat. Now we're going to do a back post. I'm going to insert my hook from the back, pick up the post with my hook like that, and then yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat. Now I'm going to do a front post double crochet, yarn over, insert my hook from the front, and pick up the post, then yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and repeat this all the way around. Now I'm going to do back post, pick up the post, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, do this all the way around. And now we're going to end the sleeve, so I'm just going to slip stitch into that first stitch that we did at the beginning of the round. Then you're just going to chain one, you can chain two to make it extra secure. Cut, pull, tighten, and then you're done with the sleeves. This is the size that I want for my sweater, and now I'm ready to do my last row. Again, you can skip this. If you don't like the ribbing rows, you can just do regular rows of single crochet. Start off with three chains, and then turn your work like you always do. Now we're going to do those front post, back post, double crochets again, so yarn over. I'm going to start off with a front post, but it really doesn't matter what you start off with. Double crochet, and I'm going to do a back post. I'm going to insert my hook from the back, grab onto the post, and pull up a loop. And now you're going to just repeat this, so you're going to do front post double crochet and then you're going to do back post double crochet and you're going to do this all the way around until you're done with this round as well and there's your finished sweater so all i did was just chain one and then i cut my yarn and pull and then you can just hide your ends you can weave them in and now you can add your decorations first i recommend taking a picture of your sweater and then using the draw tool on instagram stories you can make the shape just so you can see what stitches the embroidery should go through start by making a regular slip knot and you have to make sure that the slip knot is a bit loose so don't make it tight like that loosen it up a little bit now you're going to insert your hook where you want your work to start from and pull that slip knot up like that and now you're ready to start your embroidery so to do the embroidery you're going to insert your hook where you want the stitch to be and then you're going to pull it up and then slide it through the loop on your hook let's go into the next stitch then you're going to take this loop slide it up and then slide it through the loop on your hook like that so you can see the stitches already begin to form now i'm going to be making the straight line for the m insert my hook grab on to the working yarn pull it up and slide it through and now i'm going to repeat this until i get the letter or the shape that i want for the m so move your work this way whatever however it's easier for you to slide it through let's do this once more insert your hook it can be anywhere there's no specific place and then take your hook and pull up a loop then slide that loop through the other one on your hook. So this is what I have. This was surprisingly hard to do and I had to restart so many times. So if you're having to restart and like not finding the perfect stitch for your design, please know that that's completely normal. But I am just gonna cut the yarn and then I'm gonna pull and tighten. And then I'm gonna take my hook and pull this through and then I can just hide it you can weave your ends in to hide them, but I'm just going to tuck it in because no one can see them. Now I'm going to quickly show you how to make this heart, just in case you want to decorate your sweater with it. We're going to start off by making a magic ring. So you're going to hold the yarn like this and wrap it around your fingers, making sort of like an X shape. Use your ring finger to hold it in place. Insert your hook under, grab onto this end, and twist it up. Now grab onto this yarn and chain one. Chain one more. And now you'll have two chains at the beginning. Now we're going to insert three triple crochets into the magic ring. So you're going to yarn over twice, insert your hook into the magic ring, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the other two loops, and yarn over, pull through the last two loops. That's how you make a triple crochet. Do this two more times to insert three triple crochets inside the magic ring. Now we're going to insert three double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over, pull through the other two loops. Do this two more times.
Now you're going to chain one, then you're going to insert one triple crochet, chain one again, now do three double crochets. So now we're working on the other side of the heart. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two to make a double crochet. Let's do one more so that we have a total of three. Now to end the heart, we're just gonna do three more triple crochets. So yarn over twice, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Go ahead and do two more triple crochets so that you have a total of three. Now pull your magic ring in tighter, chain two, and then slip stitch into the magic ring. So insert your hook in to the ring, pull the loop, so then you'll have two loops on your hook, then slide this loop through the other one, making a slip stitch like that. Now you're going to chain one and then we're ready to end our heart. Pull. Don't tighten it yet. First, tighten your magic ring as much as you can. This is the front of your heart. Turn your heart to the other side and pull this way. And there you go. There you'll have your cute little heart.